Good morning, everyone, and welcome back to Chicano Studies 110A. Uh, we are in week three now, and today I wanted to provide a short uh, lecture video on understanding um, identity and key terms when it comes to Chicano Studies. Um, Chicano Studies was started in the late 60s and early 70s, and it came out of a movement, uh, an anti-war movement, um, but also, you know, advocating for better education for Mexican-American students. Um, but the term Chicano actually came out of that movement as well as a way to identify um, this, this movement of self-empowerment and being political, being politicized um, and wanting, you know, what's best for your community. So being Chicano is not only um, a subculture of sorts, but it's also um, a mentality and belief system in wanting to advocate for your community and bring about liberation, right? Bring about freedom. Um, so I'm going to share my screen uh, to show you a little slideshow about these key terms. You should have read the two articles as well, one by Cheech Marine and one um, that was featured in Teen Vogue. Um, the reason I provided you these kind of journalism type articles is because it goes along with the spirit of when the term Chicano was um, created, right? It wasn't created in these academic books or academic settings. It was through uh, political movements on the streets. It was through newspapers. It was through poetry um, that this word Chicano became to be more well known. So I wanted to assign you, uh, I wanted to assign you articles from these sources because these are sources that are more accessible for everybody, right? Because not everybody can access academic journals. Not everybody is going to college and hearing about these terms. Um, yes, there is an emphasis on education, but it's a more uh, popular, media that's being accessed, right? So imagine, you know, back then they have newspapers and magazines and poetry and meetings and social protests, things like that. Um, today we have social media and I'm sure you all have seen on social media these different terms. So I'm interested to hear more about what you see about these terms um, on social media and how you learn about these terms, whether it's through your family or through your community. Um, so yeah, today's video, I'm going to try to keep it short to maybe about 20 minutes. Uh, so please take uh, out a sheet of paper and take some notes. We have two more things for you to complete this week. One is a mural that we're going to complete together and I'll show you how to do that. Do that. And then the second one is a discussion. So another discussion. Um, you don't need to turn in any notes this week. Um, but keep those to yourself and get in the practice, of course, of, of taking notes. All right, everyone settled? Okay, awesome. Um, so I'm screen sharing uh, my slideshow and the first slide says, understanding identity. What comes with a strong sense of identity? Why is identity important? So identity is important because it tells us who we are. And having a strong self sense of identity means that we have a strong sense of who we are as people. And the reason why this is so important is because it helps us define who we are and stand strong in our power versus having others tell us who we are. You know, if we were in class right now, I would ask you um, to share with me some experiences that you've had of people telling you who you are, right? Ethnically or whatever um, identity we want to talk about. But think about the times where people have said, oh, you look this or you look that, or they say, you're not Mexican because you don't speak Spanish. Um, all, of these, all of these ways that people like to identify us and put us in a box, um, might not be true and usually aren't true, especially if um, these friends of yours or strangers or whoever are ignorant to your experience, right? Um, so having a strong sense of identity is so important 
to combat some of those um, ignorant comments and to truly know your own history so you can move forward and know what you need to feel free and what your community needs to feel free. Because traditionally, uh, Latino people are an oppressed people. Um, and that's because of um, the dominance of white supremacy in this country, which we'll be learning about as we continue on. Um, so here's a really long list of <laughs> keywords. It's actually only three keywords and then um, this discussion of race versus ethnicity. Um, so what you can do here is you can take a screenshot maybe and save it into a folder. Um, I do recommend being organized with your screenshots. I know that it's easy to just take it and not do anything with it. I'm guilty of that myself. So if you do take a screenshot, just save it into a folder, right? Chicano studies um, screenshots. Or you can write it down in your notes and have it in your notebook. Um, the great thing about having this video is you can just pause it, right? Um, so I'll go over these terms briefly, but your reading does go over uh, a couple of them as well, or all of them. Um, so the first one being Chicano. So Chicano, um, I've created this definition based off of the definition that Cheech Marine gave, um, as well as other foundational thinkers, um, such as, um, uh, oh gosh, I'm blinking on, Ruben Salazar, sorry. Ruben Salazar, uh, it's been a while since I've talked about him, but he's a journalist uh, in LA in the early 70s, and he's writing about Chicano. So he's someone that we look up to uh, in terms of definition, but this definition is changing all the time, right? Because there's new perspectives uh, and new, new people in the movement helping define the movement. So, okay, so Chicano is a Mexican American with a defiant political attitude that centers on their right to self-definition. Being Chicano is the right to self-determination. So this um, definition incorporates the fact that, yes, it's about being a, Me a Mexican American, but it's about being a Mexican American who knows um, their history and their political identity in the United States. Um, and I put defiant because, Traditionally, the Chicano movement is defiant. Um, there is protest and there is speaking out against um, the dominant oppressor, right? And speaking out against injustice. Um, obviously not every Chicano uh, ha has this mentality or is you know, an activist or anything, right? It's more about like embodying, um, embodying the fact that you know your history and you know, um, what self-empowerment feels like. And I think we all want that. So that's a super important aspect to this. Self-determination, what that word means is the right to determine who we are, the right to determine um, what we look like and what we see in the world um, beyond what Americans, uh, US Americans tell us we should be, right? So the right to self-determination means that we have decided what our world should look like or we, what we want it to look like um, without the pressures of Anglo-American culture, right? White American culture, without the pressures of having to fit in, without the pressures of having to speak English, um, all of those kinds of things. So it's the right to determine who we wanna be as people. Um, so this term also represents the working class origins and critique of social relations to power. So again, we're interested in looking at the oppressor and how um, we have been treated as folks typically in the working class. Um, this came out of the farm workers rights movement, um, but we also have our gente, right, working these like manual labor jobs and, and being treated poorly. So being Chicano means advocating for those folks or having those folks advocate for themselves to get better working conditions um, and understand why this is happening in the first place. Um, so being Chicano allows Chicanos to see a non-Anglo image of themselves in the United States. Um, so what this means is basically Chicanos by by defining themselves as Chicanos, want to see 
a part of themselves that's not assimilated to U.S. American culture. Um, Chicanos uh, work really hard to not feel pressured um, by white culture and white um, belief systems and white versions of success um, that the United States has been built on. So being Chicano is a really great strategy to like step outside of that and to just say, okay, this is who I am and this is my culture and I can feel free to practice this and believe this and follow my traditions and I don't have to um, fit in, right? And that's such a, an amazing feeling. Um, so the word Chicano, there's different ideas of where Chicano comes from, but one that I think is really uh, good is this one from the term Mexica. So Mexica uh, comes from the Aztecs, and then it was shortened to Chica, and then Chicano, and then Chicano. But the word Chicano um, also is thought to come from the Mexican state of Chihuahua, um, and people from Chihuahua migrating into the United States. So there's, there's different you know, ideas of where this word actually came from. Um, there's thoughts that the word Chicano came from being Chico or small because migrants moving to the United States were seen um, often as like betrayers of the culture. So like this was kind of like uh, taking a stab at folks like moving to the United States, taking a stab meaning like meaning to offend. Um, Okay, let's move on to the word Latino. So Latino is adopted um, by the United States. So what that means is that this word Latino, how it's used in the United States is different than how it's used um, in, in other places. And so how we use it here in the United States is it's used to define people of Latin American origin. So Latino is an identity that is predominantly focused on your geographic ancestry. So if you have descendants from any Latin American country, then you would identify as Latino. Um, it doesn't have to do with the language that you speak. It, it, it typically has to do with if you're born here, um, but it doesn't have to do with citizenship necessarily um, because you have recent migrants coming here and then learning about this term Latino in the United States and taking on that term as well. But the term Latino is not typically used in other Latin American countries. So that's why it's unique to the United States. Um, so yeah, for example, in Spanish, it means someone belonging to the people of ancient Latium. So in Italy, whose language was Latin. So the Romans, of course, were Latinos. So this word Latino, it's being criticized and critiqued a lot right now because of this history that we know of it, of the fact that it's meant to identify people of ancient Latium in Italy. So does Latino actually mean the identity for people coming from Italy who speak Latin? Um, that's the original history of that term. How it's been used in the United States has been very, very different. Um, like I said, to identify people of Latin American origin, but uh, it's important to acknowledge the history and to decide if you want to identify with Latino, which actually means historically identifying with the people belonging to ancient Latium in Italy. It's up to you to decide, um, but th that's the, the history, right? Same goes with Hispanic. Hispanic has a really interesting history. Um, I saw on the poll, I only have a few responses on the poll so far. But I saw that a lot of folks are, some folks are identifying as Hispanic. And that's because we have been taught to identify as this term. And we have, like I said in the beginning, we've been told to identify as Hispanic. Um, or, you know, that's how people have described us, right? Um, but what Hispanic really means is relating to Spain, right? So having descendants coming directly from Spain. Um, or it's often used to group together um, folks who speak Spanish. Um, but the term Hispanic comes from the Latin word for Spain, Hispania, which later becomes Espana. Um, and so the term Hispanic came out in, the 19, in 1980 um, as a way to try to 
group people together um, on the census who were identified as Spanish speakers. Um, but what happens with this term is because it was created by the government, because it was created by non-Latinos, non-Chicanos, non-Mexicanos, um, it doesn't accurately describe who that giant group of people is. And it can tend to erase um, some of the unique identifiers under that label of Hispanic. So think of Hispanic as that giant umbrella, right? Where the government just wants to see everyone under that umbrella who speaks Spanish. But once you're under that umbrella, maybe you look to your left and you see an indigenous person from Guatemala um, who speaks Maya and you're like, hey, you know, what are you doing here? You're indigenous um, and you speak uh, an indigenous dialect. Why are you under this umbrella? And it's because the US government looks at people who speak Spanish as all the same, right? There's like a traditional, not traditional, there is a socially constructed idea of how Hispanic people should look. And so this person who is indigenous from Guatemala has been forcefully placed under the Hispanic umbrella perhaps because of how they look and perhaps because of the fact that they probably also speak Spanish because a lot of indigenous people speak their own dialect and also um, Spanish because that's the national language of uh, Mexico. So being Hispanic uh, is something that a lot of Chicanos are disidentifying with or they're moving away from because of the fact that it does relate to Spain and if we are to, you know, say we have descendants from Spain or connect with that notion, it means that we're connecting with the country that colonized um, Mexico, right? That colonized uh, our indigenous cultures. So it's something that, that Chicanos are really moving away from because not only of the uh, racist stereotyping and discrimination, um, but also because of the fact that it erases a lot of important um, specific identities, especially indigenous people or Afro Latinx, right? Um, but also because folks don't want to identify with Spain, with the colonizer. And so this term Hispanic, um, what it's really meant to define is people who are having descendants from Spain, literally from Spain over in Europe, right? So um, I definitely ask you to think about this, um, read that article and you can make up your own mind about this word and the context of it. Um, but it's important to know that the original intention of the word Hispanic was to be used by the government on the US census to somehow group together everyone that speaks Spanish. But we know that, you know, someone who speaks Spanish, if there's two people who speak Spanish, they can be completely different, right? Different ethnicities, different countries, all of that. Okay, and lastly, we have race versus ethnicity. So this is a conversation that will continue as we move forward. Um, but it's important to know that ethnicity is the word that we wanna to use to describe um, common traits of a particular population, common heritage um, or culture, including a shared language, genetics or history. Um, race is a word that is contentious in the US because it is rooted in a, uh, sci a fake science that was disproved. Sorry, I don't mean to use quotes, but um, race, as a category is rooted in eugenics and eugenics was proven to be a racist um, attempt by white scientists to group um, people of color together based off of their um, their by their size of their bones and all of this um, and eugenics was disproven because it was discovered that the scientists who were white who were trying to categorized people of color had this intention of being white supremacists who wanted to prove that white folks are better than others because of this 
so-and-so scientific method. Um, so I definitely encourage you to research a little bit more about eugenics and learn about that. But race is often a way that we talk about people, but it's in very limited terms, right? So white, black, Asian, like it's very, very limited. And so in this class, we really wanna focus on ethnicity because ethnicity more accurately describes people from a specific country, um, people from a specific town in a specific country and the dialect and the culture and everything that they share. So it's really important for us not to overgeneralize and it's, it's more important for us to be specific and say, what ethnicity are you and, and where is it from? For example, you know, like being Latino, like that's not a race because Latinos have all different kinds of backgrounds, right? There are Latinos who are black, there are Latinos who are lighter skin, there are Latinos who are um, indigenous. Um, there's a lot of different people under these categories and we can't, so we can't say that um, my race is Latino because it doesn't accurately tell you um, your an the ancestry that you have. Okay, um, I just wanted to review a little bit more. I know this video is starting to go long, so bear with me. Um, I wanted to share with you a little bit more about what Chicano is or Chicanx. Um, the X is a way to, to use this term and be gender neutral and inclusive of people who are non-binary or who don't identify as male or female. Um, so Chicanx and Latinx are, are really important terms to be inclusive um, of, of others um, who are non-binary or on the um, gender spectrum, right? Um, so Chicanx is, um, as a movement, this is how I perceive the movement as incorporating, right? So remember when I said Chicano or Chicanx is about having a political identity? Um, so this political identity incorporates these kind of beliefs and these thought processes, but not all Chicanos, uh, not all Chicanos believe in every single thing on here, but this is how the movement is um, being driven forward today. So Chicanx is, I'm going to read the, these brown circles because these are the ones that have persisted since the late 60s, early 70s. Chicanx is self-determination, so the right to live out your truth, your desires, to feel truly free, and to feel human. Chicanx is political, and we talked about that already. Um, it's a movement, which means that as a movement, it's constantly changing, it's being reinvented, and we honor the histor historical aspects of being Chicano. Um, and typically being Chicano is thinking about our working class origins, um, of how um, our ancestors were expected to work these very manual hard labor jobs. Um, and being Chicano means that there's a legacy of having this, this working class origin. Um, but today, it's also about the empowerment of women in the community. It's about, it's going, it's, a, it's about, um, going against gentrification, which means when you have people not of your community starting to come into your community and raising the rents and increasing the prices for things, changing the overall culture. It's happening in Barrio Logan and Sherman Heights, um, traditionally Mexican neighborhoods, Mexican American neighborhoods um, that are now being gentrified and, and um, occupied by people who are not Chicano. Um, Chicanx is inclusive of queer folks, gender non-conforming, and more. So being Chicano means that you, or Chicanx um, means that you are advocating for the LGBT members in the Chic Chicanx community. Um, we don't leave anyone out, right? It's really important. Um, Chicanx in the past few years has been about um, anti-police and police brutality on the community. Um, there is a group called the Brown Berets who in particular um, protects Chicano Park um, against police violence. So if a police car comes 
into Chicano Park, they are on alert and making sure that no harm is done to the community. Um, Chicanx is about being inclusive of non-Mexicanos. So we talked about that um, earlier, where uh, being Chicanx is not simply being Mexican American. Um, there's a lot of us with mixed ancestry and mixed cultures. And so we really want to honor that, right? And then also, of course, Chicanx is about advocating for undocumented rights, undocumented people, um, and protecting um, that migrant journey and bringing, bringing dignity to it. Um, so yeah, this is a lot to take in, but this is the way the movement is moving forward. All of these things are so important to making sure that all members of our community are free. Um, however, a lot of Chicanos and Chicanexes um, sometimes don't believe in all of these things and it's just about um, it's just about the continuing education of our community, of our families, right? Um, okay, so I think I covered mostly everything that I would like to cover with you all. I do have a video um, about the census um, that I think I'll post so that um, you can check it out. It's about, you know, how do we identify ourselves on the census? Is it even possible to identify ourselves accurately on the census? And why is it proven to be such a difficult answer to question, or a difficult question to answer, especially uh, for chicken exes? Um, but again, I do want to bring up the point that identity is important to the chicken ex community because with a strong sense of identity, you can advocate for your community, you can inspire and build confidence in others, you can um, seek or find justice and representation to fight erasure and discrimination. So this is a really powerful tool to be able to like accurately identify yourself. So I encourage you to think about your identity, where your family is from, where your ancestors are from, and really trying to get way more specific than just Chicano, Latino, and Hispanic. For example, like I have family, um, I have ancestry that traces back to a tribe in New Mexico called the San Ildefonso tribe. Um, and then I also have an ancestor from the state of Chihuahua. Um, I'm not sure the exact city, um, but really thinking about, you know, what was the tradition that you were raised in? Where are your ancestors from? And how can we come back to that? You know, how can we um, uh, start to reclaim our indigenous ancestry, reclaim our, um, just our ancestry in general. So these are things that are really important. Okay, um, before I leave you today, I wanna share with you a little bit about what the project is for this week. Um, so this week we're gonna work on a mural and this is an app online. Um, you don't have to download anything on your phone. So this is our mural that we're working with and we're zoomed out on it right now. If you notice in the four corners, there's the terms Chicanx, Latinx, Hispanic, and Mexican. Um, for this circle, I'm thinking Mexican, like from Mexico, um, but just in general, Mexican, right? And so what I want us to do is I want us to think about what these terms mean to us. You can zoom in a lot. So I recommend like playing around and moving it all around. Um, but this is the prompt. What do these identity terms mean to you? What have you learned about these identity terms? So what I want you guys to do is to put in a picture or write some text and uh, create one picture or artistic depiction as well as a definition for what you understand these words to mean. Um, so this is really just about thinking about what you have learned about these words. There's options here to put in um, pictures. I'm not sure. Oh, I don't think I can add pictures right now because I'm uh, sharing it with you all. But you can add pictures, you can draw things. Um, there's sticky notes here to leave um, text responses. Um, but I don't want you to just copy the definition that I gave you on the slides. I want you to describe to me what you think it means and just a reflection about what you think these terms mean. Um, so there's a lot of room on here for you all to express yourself. Um, you can zoom in, right? You can zoom in pretty far. 
and add little um, post-it notes over here and add pictures, like I said. Um, remember to leave your name so that I can give you participation points. And yeah, just be creative with it, you know? There's, I've done this experiment before where I've Googled the word Hispanic and I've Googled the word Latino, and then I'll put the picture in there of what those Google, um, what the Google uh, response tells me because it tells you a lot about how Hispanics are seen in the US, how Latinos are seen in the US, and the way that these identities kind of glaze over all of our amazing um, differences, glaze over our indigenous background. Um, so yeah, I encourage you to go in here, play around with it, and just reflect on what these terms mean to you. Um, I, I would love to see pictures and I would love to see your reflections on what these words mean to you. All right, good job today, you all. Thank you um, for your attention and good luck the rest of this week um, with the rest of your studies. All right, take care.